if the derivative of capital F with respect to u is little f of u and u is equal to g of x, then by the chain rule, the derivative with respect to x of f capital F of g of x is little f of g of x times the derivative of g at x. So what this is saying is that the indefinite integral of f of u, which is capital F of u, is the same as the indefinite integral of little f of g of x times g prime of x, which is capital F of g of x. Using integrals, we can express it as follows. We call this the substitution rule. So the integral of f of u du is equal to the integral of f of g of x g prime of x dx. Let's see an example. So let's take uh, an integer that is not equal to negative 1 and consider the indefinite integral of the sine to the n of x times the cosine of x dx. So here you see a, a composition of functions. So the outer function is the nth power, the inner function is the sine function, and then you see as a multiple, as a, as a factor, the derivative of the sine function. So this suggests that we should introduce the substitution u equals the sine of x that lets us write uh, the cosine of x dx as du and then we can express the integral uh, in terms of u as the integral of u to the n du which by the power rule we can find to be u to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 plus c substituting the sine of x back in for you we get the indefinite integral in terms of, in terms of x be the sine to the n plus 1 of x all divided by n plus 1 plus c Okay, let's look at some other problems involving the substitution rule. Which substitutions would be the most effective for finding the following indefinite integral? The integral of e to the 5x plus 4 dx. And once you have this substitution selected, uh, use it to solve the integral. So pause the video and select your answer now. Hope you've paused it and I've selected u equals 5x plus 4. So in this integral, if we substitute and write for u 5x plus 4, that means that du is 5 dx, or in other words, dx is 1 over 5 times du. So we can write this integral as the integral of e to the u times 1 over 5 du which we can um, integrate and find it to be one fifth of e to the u plus any constant c equals and now we substitute back in for u uh, 5x plus 4 it's a fifth of e to the 5x plus 4 plus any constant c let's look at the next problem so which substitution would be the most effective for finding the following indefinite integral the integral of 3x times root 1 plus x squared dx. Uh, so select your substitution and then use it to solve the integral. Hope you selected either of these two. So I'll go with uh, the first one of these two. They are both equally good substitutions. So to uh, substitute the expression under the square root is useful to call it u because its derivative is then 2x um, which is almost what we have in front in front of the square root we have 3x there so that's just a constant multiple which we can fix so let's call u 1 plus x squared or 1 plus x squared u and then du is equal to 2x dx um, so which we can also write as uh, 2 thirds times 3x dx so the 3x dx part we can replace by 3 um, halves of du. So we can write this integral as um, the square root of u times 3 halves du. So this 3 halves we can just factor out and we are left with uh, the integral of square root of u or u to the half du which by the power rule we can um, find to be 3 halves times u to the 3 halves um, divided by 3 halves, so the 3 over 2 cancel, plus any constant c, 
So what we obtain is indeed um, by substituting back in 1 plus um, x squared for you, uh, what we get is 1 plus x squared raised to the 3 halves plus c, or if you want to write it in terms of square roots, you could write it as the square root of 1 plus x squared cubed plus any constant c. Okay, let's look at the next question. Which substitution would be the most effective for finding the following indefinite integral? The integral of the tangent of x dx. So pause the video and select your answer now. Hope you pause it and I've selected u equals the cosine of x. So to find this substitution in the first place, it would be useful to first express the tangent of x as the sine of x over the cosine of x and then realize that uh, the sine of x is the derivative of the cosine of x up to a minus sign. So calling the cosine of x our new variable u would mean that du is negative sine of x dx. So the sine of x dx part is minus du. Therefore, we can write this integral in terms of u as being negative 1 over u du whose antiderivative or um, indefinite integral would be negative natural logarithm of the absolute value of u plus any constant c. Substituting the cosine of x back in for u, we get negative ln of absolute value of the cosine of x plus any constant c. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.